Hi guys, so today's review is going to be focused completely on the types of conflict that we can encounter while reading any sort of uh, fictional or non-fictional text, depending on what type of text it might be. Um, specifically, we've heard about this stuff before. We had an entire lesson on this. You have a note page on this. But as a quick review, let's go over what exactly a conflict is, the different types, and then we'll get into actually explaining it, since on your final, that's what you're going to have to do. So remember, conflict is a struggle between a character and a story and some sort of internal or external force. This leads us into the two main categories of conflict. You have internal conflict and external conflict. Very simple. Internal conflict is a struggle between a character, person, and themselves. Typically, this is going to be a conflict that resides simply in the character's mind. We're going to see a lot of internal dialogue, and really only they can solve this issue. Nobody can really help them. An external conflict is a struggle between a character or person and some sort of external or outside force. So this is something else is causing an issue for this person and they're having to deal with that. Now, these identifications of these categories can sometimes be a little bit blurry or hazy because a lot of the times our internal conflicts are caused by external conflicts. And sometimes our internal conflicts will also cause external conflicts. But when we're trying to classify something, we have to really think, okay, what is the root issue here? Is it internal or is it external? And that comes down to just really thinking about what you're reading. So let's get into the subtypes of these conflicts. So internal conflict, there's only one subtype. That is man versus self, okay? And then for your external conflicts, you have quite a few more. You have man versus man, man versus nature, man versus technology, man versus the supernatural, and man versus society. So when you are asked to identify what type of conflict is being shown, you not only have to classify it as internal conflict or external conflict, but you also have to classify it subcategories, okay? So if I was to present a quote to you and I said, what type of conflict is this? You would have to say, it is external conflict and it's man versus technology or whatever the case is. If it's internal conflict, you say it's internal conflict and it's man versus self, okay? So you must be sure that you're not just saying, oh, it's an internal conflict. You have to say what type or, oh, it's an external conflict. You have to say what type, okay? So that's gonna lead us into actually looking at the types of conflict that we've seen in night so far because on your final, you might have a question that deals with the types of conflicts that he's encountering, and you might have to actually explain that. So let's get into specifically the type that he has encountered, Eliza being he, has encountered throughout this book. Okay, so the first one is man versus self. We see lots of internal conflict going on um, with Eliza. Specifically, the definition of this is a character that is struggling internally with issues that range from morals, values, fate, religion, desires, and anything else in between that you could possibly struggle internally with, okay? Um, your entire essay was all about man versus self, okay? Because it was man versus his own personal feelings about his religion. So that is an example of man versus self. You've already written one about it. Man versus man is a character who has a struggle with another human character in the story. This conflict can manifest in an emotional, physical, or verbal manner. So any issue that Eliza had with another person, um, his SS officers, the Blockle tests, whichever, if he had an issue with them, that is a man versus man conflict. Then we have man versus society. A character struggles with the actions or beliefs of their culture or government. So this is a really interesting topic that Eliza or type of conflict that Eliza does come into um, basically sees a lot. So that could be his issue with the fact that the people in Germany and the people around that are not Jewish are allowing this stuff to happen. So their way of thinking he struggles with. Um, you could also even make an argument for the fact that he struggles with the Jewish community within this concentration camp that he goes through because he's constantly being like, why are these people doing this? It makes no sense. They shouldn't be doing this. And he kind of rebels against that at certain points. So that in its sense, in a, in a way, could be classified as man versus society. But notice this issue with this outside force causes then an internal conflict with Eliza. So you can see how they play with each other. 
The last type that we really see in this book is man versus nature. A character struggling with a natural force such as fire, earthquake, any sort of weather issues, that's gonna be classified as man versus nature. At the end of the book or um, middle end, um, when we see Eliza and his father going on their death march um, into the abandoned towns in the freezing weather, the snow, all of that, and them dealing with that, that's man versus nature, okay? So we're gonna get into actually practicing this, okay? So we're gonna ask everybody, you're all gonna turn with me. I'm gonna kind of model this thought process for you guys, kind of like we've done in the previous review sessions. Um, and we're gonna work through this. See, how would we go about analyzing something for conflict? So say you were asked to analyze the situation on page 92 of night for conflict. Okay, so everyone needs to flip to page 92. So on page 92, I'm gonna read basically what takes place on this, okay? And then we're gonna figure out how would we go about doing this. So I'm gonna read the page to you guys. There was a shouting outside in the courtyard. Night had fallen and the SS were ordering us to form ranks. We started to march once more. The dead remained in the yard under the snow without even a marker like fallen guards. No one recited Kaddish over them. Sons abandoned the remains of their fathers without a tear. On the road, it snowed and snowed. It snowed endlessly. We were marching more slowly. Even the guards seemed tired. My wounded foot no longer hurt, probably frozen. I felt I had lost that foot. It had become detached from me like a wheel fallen off a car. Never mind. I had to accept the fact. I would have to live with only one leg. The important thing was not to dwell on it, especially now. Leave those thoughts for later. Our column had lost all appearance of discipline. Everyone walked as he wished, as he could. No more gunshots. Our guards surely were tired, but death hardly needed their help. The cold was consciously or conscientiously doing its work. At every step, somebody fell down and ceased to suffer. From time to time, SS officers on motorcycles drove the length of the column to shake off the growing apathy. Hold on, we're almost there. Courage, just a few more hours. We're arriving in Glywitz. These words of encouragement, even coming as they did from the mouths of our assassins, were of great help. Nobody wanted to give up now, just before the end, so close to our destination. Our eyes searched the horizon for the barbed wire of Glywitz. Our only wish was to arrive there quickly. By now it was night. It had stopped snowing. We marched a few more hours before we arrived. We saw the camp only when we stood right in front of its gates. Okay, so that is page 92. So now that I've read it, now I figure out how would I go about actually analyzing it for conflict. So first step, you need to identify the type of conflict being shown on this page. So is the conflict internal or external? And what type of internal or external conflict is it? So if I was to answer these questions, I would probably look back over it and be like, okay, what really is going on here? In my mind, I don't see much internal issues going on um, within this, other than the fact you could make an argument for certain pieces of it, him having to kind of mentally keep himself going. But when I think of the root of that, what is causing that internal struggle there? And that comes down to the external force of something. So in my mind, this is an external conflict, okay? He's having to push past something else outside of him to keep going. Now we have to think step two. What exactly is that? How does it fit in to that type of conflict? So what from the page or excerpt, excerpt helped me understand that it was an internal external conflict and how does what is happening and be specific here, help you understand which type or subtype is it? So that requires me to think now that I've identified that it is an external conflict, what is the subtype? Because I'm gonna need to understand that in order to answer these questions. So what is he really conflicted with here? What's causing this issue for him? And when you read through it, the issue is not the other people. The issue is not his society because they're actually kind of being nice to them at this point. The issue is the weather, right? So the reason why people are dropping dead, the reason why he's struggling with his body right now is because of the weather. So we can classify this as not only an external conflict, but the subtype being man versus nature, okay? So now I have to think what from the page helped me actually understand this. And I need to be specific in this. So if I'm looking over this, I'd probably bracket, if you guys didn't already have this bracketed, because we actually did talk about this excerpt, um, the chunk where it says on the road all the way down to cease to suffer, that chunk really does help me understand that it is an external conflict dealing with weather. Because he explicitly tells us in here, um, Everyone walked as he wished, as he could. No more gunshots. Our guards surely were tired. 
but death hardly needed their help. The cold was conscientiously doing its work. So basically telling us the cold is what's causing this issue for them, okay? Now, we're gonna actually kind of write something together, okay? So you're gonna see my process, step three, which is actually explaining it. I'm gonna get out of this bigger screen and I'm gonna actually type right into here. So say I had to analyze what the heck's going on on page 92 and how does it classify as one of these, top, these types of conflicts? I'm gonna start off by saying, and if this was a paragraph, I'm not gonna write a full paragraph, but if I was just briefly explaining it, say maybe this is a short answer response, you don't know. I would say something like um, the situation, oops, situation on page 92 of night, and remember book titles always go in italics, of night can be classified as an external conflict, specifically man versus nature. And then I'm gonna get into actually explaining that, right? So like what's going on on this page? This could technically be like a claim if I was writing a full paragraph. So then I'll go into like on this page, the reader, can see that Eliza is clearly having trouble continuing on his journey to Glywitz because of because of the harsh weather. Some spelling errors. They spell Glywitz right? G O E I W I. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, because of the harsh weather. On I won't say on this page again, sorry I said that. So I'm gonna actually use a transitional phrase. So for example, I'm gonna end up writing a paragraph, watch guys, okay. For example, um, he explains, let's see. Um, uh, where do I wanna start quoting? I'm gonna actually quote a couple sentences here. Um, let's do it like this. Death hardly, and I see I started in the middle of a sentence here, so I put the three dots right here. Death hardly needed their help. And actually, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do brackets and input the guards, so that way there's a little bit more context there. Let's see, oops, not The guards. Help, period. The cold was conscientiously doing its work. At every step, somebody fell, fell down and ceased to suffer. Ending quote, we have this, I already said on page 92, um, but I'll add it in just in case. So we'll say Wizel 92. Um, and, oh, hold on guys. I think something just popped on my TV. Let me mute this real quick. Sorry guys. <laughs> well, that was awkward. Sorry guys, you got to see a little, little blooper in my explanation. Okay, so going back into this. So I give my quotes and then I can actually explain like how is this man versus nature, right? So we could then go into explaining in this moment, Eliza clearly explains the main issue for these people right now, for these people, is the harsh weather conditions, conditions, not the typical, uh, actually I'll say the harsh weather condition, main issue for these people is harsh weather conditions, making the main conflict on this page, a man versus nature external conflict. Okay, so it's not a full paragraph. I kind of just explained it, gave a quote, and then explained that quote a little bit, okay? Um, now, this is basically what we're expecting you to do when we ask you, and I'll make this a little bit bigger for you guys to put on full screen. Um, when we're asking you to analyze something for conflict, a lot of the times when we presented these questions for you, when I say we, I'm saying myself and Mrs. Carter, a lot of the times the answers that we would get would be like, 
you'd give a quote and they say it's an external conflict. Okay, well, that was part of the question. I asked you to identify an external conflict. So just giving me a quote is not really helping. You need to actually explain what type of conflict it is and how it fits that category, okay? So if on your final, you come across something like this question, we are expecting something along these lines, even if it's just the first two sentences here, okay? You might not always have to provide a quote. You might not have to actually analyze the quote, but this is what we're looking for, okay? Explain not only by identifying the type of conflict, but actually how does it fit that category? Okay, so you guys are actually going to be practicing this today um, and you will see what that is on the lesson plan for today. So hopefully this helps refresh your memory on some of this stuff and hopefully it'll help you in terms of the final. See you guys.